In this episode, let's look at how to export your video from Premiere Pro CC 2014 to YouTube. This also applies to Premiere Pro CS5 up through CC 2014. Check this out. And before we jump into Premiere Pro, let's first look at something here over on YouTube. Over on YouTube, and I've left a link for this down in the About section below, it gives you all of the details on what you need to do to export your video for YouTube in particular. So for example, here it talks about the container, which is the file type. So they're looking for an MP4. Um, audio should be an AAC. Video codec should be H.264. This is a lot of technical stuff. If you're not uh, following, don't worry about it. We're gonna walk through all the details here. But if you ever wanna kind of geek out and look at the details and kind of dig in and figure out what your options are, this is a great resource for you. So I'll leave a link for that down below. Okay, over here in Premiere Pro. And again, this is Premiere Pro CC 2014. So right now it's December 2014, just to give you an idea of which version I have here. There are a couple of matters to take into consideration before you even get to this point. And the first one is when you shoot your footage or capture your footage, you need to make some decisions. And one of the first things I would recommend, or a couple of things I'd recommend, number one, when you set the format on your camera, or when you're capturing, you know, whatever it is you're capturing, if it's video game play, whatever, you want to use a progressive setting. So there are usually options that are along the lines of 1080p, 1080i, and then there are frame rates. And uh, let's talk about those for just a second here. So if we come back here, for example, to the encoding settings for YouTube, frame rate, if you're doing uh, capturing gameplay, uh, like video games on your computer, typically you're gonna to wanna to do you know 30 to 60 frames per second, and that's normal. If you're shooting a video, like uh, you know something you'd post on YouTube shot with a camera, typically you're gonna do 24, 25, or 30 frames per second. In the United States, um, most of the major motion pictures, for example, are screened at 24 frames per second, and um, you know a lot of TV is at 30 frames per second. So. That's kind of a, uh, you know, you're, you have flexibility there. I think if you're trying to do action, you probably want to be a higher frame rate. If you're doing something more narrative, um, talking head, uh, you know, a video of yourself, like a vlog, you're probably going to want to be in the 30 to, you know, between 24 and 30 frames per second. So those are some things to keep in mind there. The idea is that you want to keep the same frame rate when you upload. So the file that you export should have the same frame rate that you shot in. What other things? Um, resolutions, YouTube is really kind of open up in terms of resolutions, they accept, they now accept up to 4K, which is 2160p. Um, and you can do a variety of them in between. You can go down as low as 240p. Um, 480p is old standard definition, um, obviously high definition, so on and so forth. So shoot for one of those. I would recommend somewhere between, you know, when you're shooting, doing full HD, if your camera can handle it, as long as it's progressive, um, up to 4K and a lot of more cameras are coming out now that can do 4K as well. And then one last thing, you don't want to add letterboxes when you're doing your video editing. If you think, you know, you've got a different kind of funky aspect ratio, don't mess with it. Just leave it like it is and YouTube will take care of it for you. Okay, let's get into Premiere. Now, one other thing, when you're in Premiere, if you haven't done this already, there, are, you know, you may come up with the question, well, I don't know what I shot it at. <laughs> and that's not a problem. So once you bring your footage into Premiere, what you can do, is right click on it and choose properties. And that will actually tell you the resolution that you shot it at. It'll tell you the frame rate. In this case, I shot it at 24 frames per second. And it will also show you your audio bit rate. All those are gonna be important um, to know when you're exporting. So if you have a question about what you shot and what your footage is, that's how you check it. One last thing, now when you are creating your sequence, what a lot of people call a timeline, that's what this is over here. When you're first creating that, rather than muddling around in um, a bunch of different settings to set up your sequence, here's an easier way to do it that will ensure that you get the right settings. So what you wanna do is grab your first piece of footage, whatever it might be, drag it over and drop it on this little icon that looks like a post-it note or a sticky note. And when you do that, you can see it creates a new sequence for you and what it does, this sequence now, if I look at the properties on this, it sets up the appropriate properties based on the settings of the footage file that you just dropped on it. So that can kind of save a lot of grief. I've had some questions over the, the last couple of years when our original video on how to export was put up. So that's something that can save you a lot of grief. Go ahead and do that to create your sequence and it'll be a lot easier on yourself uh, when you go to export it. 
Okay, all of that out of the way. This is the video I want to export. And we have everything cut and ready to go. You can see there's our little project there. Once we've done that, um, there are a couple of, of different options you have here. Now, if I'm, if I go up to the file menu and I choose export, sometimes you want to choose this media option, but you can see here it's grayed out and I can't choose anything. All you have to do if you get that is click on your sequence, you know, whatever it may be called. And that's with this little uh, icon here that looks like a timeline. Once that's selected, you can come up and file, export, and then media becomes available to you. So that helps you get around that. Now here are our export settings in the export window. Um, first of all, what you want to do is make sure that you have selected to export the entire video, assuming that's what you want to do. And that's what these little triangles down here let you do is select which part you're going to export. In this case, we want to export everything. Um, then we come up here to the export settings. And the first thing we want to choose is H.264, just like that. Then the next thing we want to choose is in this preset menu, we want to drop down here to YouTube. Now, this is where you need to know what resolution you shot it in. And again, full HD is 1080p. So that's what we're going to choose for illustrating in this case. But you want to choose whatever resolution you shot it in, unless you're trying to down res it. You don't want to up res. So if you shot in full HD, you probably don't want to choose 4K because it's not going to magically make your video that was shot in HD become 4K. Um, but you can down res if you choose to do that. Normally, I would suggest go with 1080p if that's what you shot in. Um, or 720p if that's what you shot in. And again, you can check that over here like we showed you before. So we're gonna choose YouTube 1080p HD. Now, once we've done that, it's actually set a bunch of these settings for us. So this is gonna make it a lot easier for us. But before we get down to that, let's go ahead and choose a name for the file that we want to export. So I'm just gonna say, let's put this on our desktop for now. And we're just gonna call this export file. There we go. Click Save, and that will tell it where it's going to export. So good with that. There are some of these tabs we're not even going to bother with because um, they're kind of special purpose. So what we're really going to look at is the video, audio, and then just double, just double check that our multiplexer tab is set up right, just to keep things simple here. So video, first of all, because we chose the YouTube 1080 PhD, it's already set some things for us. So it's already set our resolution, which is 1920 by 1080. It does something really clever here that it didn't used to do in older versions. Now, all of the, what we're talking about here can still work if you're using Premiere Pro, C or sorry, yeah, Premiere Pro, CS 5.5 and higher. That's when I started using it, so I'm not sure before that, but I think probably in 5 and higher is where this applies. But in CC 2014 is when they added these some nice new features here that make it even easier for you. So what it's done here, it's actually chosen the frame rate based on how we set our video up. And that is, remember, we dragged our piece of footage onto this icon, which created the sequence. This is coming from the sequence setting. So it knows already, hey, your frame rate was 23.976, which is uh, very similar to 24, and, and YouTube will take this as well. Um, so it already knows that. And what this little check mark means is match the source, match the sequence that you're trying to export. Don't try to change that frame rate. When you do change frame rates, things can get very funky. So again, when you're uploading to YouTube or exporting your file to upload to YouTube, you wanna just stay with the frame rate that you shot at. So again, in this case, 23,976. We do wanna stay with progressive, leave the aspect at square pixels, profile, high. And you can see that if you go back to the YouTube encoding settings, it does talk about high profile. So we're good there. Um, level 4.2. Now, this will change. if Again, if you choose to export to 4K, this will actually bump this up to, I believe, 5.1 or 5.2. But don't worry about this. Whatever your preset, if you chose the right preset, these settings will be correct. Okay. Now, I accidentally changed that. We're going to go back to 4.2. Okay. Good there. Now, our next setting here are the bitrate settings. This is where we can change things a little bit. Now, we can go a little bit higher quality by choosing VBR 2-pass. VBR means variable bitrate, and 2-pass means that it actually runs through the video twice to make sure that it's, it's compressing it and maintaining as much quality as possible. So I definitely recommend you do that. You don't have to. You can do one pass if you're in a real hurry and you want to get this export out quickly, just stick with one pass. But if you want a little bit higher quality and you have a little more time, go to 2-pass. And then we have our target bit rate and our maximum bit rate. Now, as we saw over on the help file 
from YouTube. It does talk about bitrate as well. And for example here, if you're doing a 1080p, it recommends eight megabit, that's 8,000 kilobits, same thing. You'll notice that actually in the preset, it's doubling that. You might ask why? Well, this is the kind of the standard quality uploads. You can do higher quality uploads if you have a faster internet connection. It's going to make a bigger file, but it will produce higher quality. So for example, in the case of Full HD 1080p, you can go up to 50 kilobits per second, which is 50 megabits. You can see the preset here is actually only taking us to 16. I find 16 is is um, probably pretty good for most of us if we're shooting if we're doing full HD. And actually, it estimates the size of the file here. So we're already this file is going to be 1.6 gigabytes in size. That's going to take a while to upload, depending on your internet connection. Now, a lot of people now have broadband, so that it goes pretty fast. And actually, I do too. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Now, what you can also do is take this maximum bitrate, and I just crank that all the way up. And you'll notice it didn't change the estimated file size. All that's doing is that if the encoding process finds a series of frames that it really needs to use a higher bitrate on, it'll actually bump it up to maintain that quality. Um, and it won't significantly affect the size of the overall, of overall file. So you can bump that up without necessarily affecting the size of the file. But here, you know, you might want to tweak this. And as you tweak it, you'll notice that the estimated file size will change. So you make a decision there on what you want to do. I typically do it at 16 because I think that produces really good quality and I'm not in that much of a hurry to upload. It can take a while and I'm okay with that. All right, that's all of our settings for video. We hop on over to audio. Now, again, if you don't remember what you shot at, and normally this is one where it's going to match what you have, or in almost all cases, video cameras will shoot at 48 thousand hertz or 48 kilohertz um, so normally you're just going to want to leave this there if you're not sure again come back over right click on your footage choose properties and it will tell you what the sample rate was that you shot at and you'll just want to match that and then um, normally I do stereo because if you can have any music in your track normally that's going to be stereo I choose high quality because um, I want the best sound and a lot of my videos are actually about sound production so I need to have as good sound quality sound as I can um, and then bitrate here for AAC, the max it allows here is 320. So we're all good there. One last thing, just to double check on your multiplexer, you just want to make sure that's set to MP4. Again, that's the file extension, file format that uh, YouTube is looking for. And stream compatibility, just leave that at standard. Once you've done that, the last thing I do is I click the box here for use maximum render quality. We're ready to export. So we have two options. We have this Q and we have this export button. Both of them work. Either one you want to choose is fine. There's a difference between them. The only difference is if I click export, this window will stay here and it will export the whole video here. Now that can take a while. And in this particular case, I have a video that's about 15 minutes long. And I would estimate on my computer, which is really pretty fast, it's a six core hyper threading processor computer with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So it's a pretty powerful computer. Um, it also has a, a powerful graphics card, which I believe is involved in the rendering as well. So for me, this video will probably take about 20 minutes to render out on a less powerful computer. It could take a significant amount of time longer. So the nice thing about using, um, well, you could use the export and that'll just tie up this window and it'll be there until it's done exporting. If on the other hand, you click the Q button, it actually takes you into what's called Adobe Media Encoder, which is a separate application. And from here, once your video shows up, all you have to do is click this play button here, the green arrow, and it will start exporting. And then you can still go back into uh, Premiere and, and still do things there. And you might ask yourself, well, why do you want to do things if you've already finished editing your video? Well, what I typically do is I almost always forget this beforehand, but in YouTube, I like to make thumbnails that I can upload that um, are shown when, you know, before someone goes to watch the video, that's the thumbnail they see. I like to go find a frame within my video and then I just click this button here and export that individual frame to use as my thumbnail. So I usually do that while it's exporting. So that's really the only difference between those two of, of clicking the export bus button, which ties up your window there versus the Q button, which opens this separate application called Media Encoder and uh, exports it from there. So there is a quick overview on how to export your video from YouTube using Premiere Pro. And again, in this case, we're using Premiere Pro CC 2014. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. We'd love to hear them for you. If it's a technical or like a an issue with your application crashing, I probably can't help you with that. I definitely 
recommend you contact Adobe for help on those kind of things. But if it's a question about the content we covered here, kind of some of the settings, definitely leave those down below. And either I or maybe some other of uh, people in our little community here on YouTube will help answer those and we'll get you on your way. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you go ahead and do that. And we'll get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon. Mm-hmm.